he's a legend of the sport. The guy who actually put the mountain biking to the next level. 17 years of winning World Cups and two Olympics. He was an idol for most of us here on the race circuit. Julian Epsilon, the great. Great battles, where I always will remember. I'm impressed forever of uh, what he achieved. Olympic champion, world champion, the record holder for World Cups, Julian Epsilon! Let's start uh, from the beginning. How did you get started with bikes? Where did that come from? I started mountain bike at uh, 14 years old, so it's not really young. Uh, a, parent, a friend of my parents uh, asked me, oh, do you want to try a mountain bike? He, I did uh, a loop with him and he said to my parents, hey, he looks good on the bike. Maybe, maybe he can try to do a, a competition. There is one next week, next weekend. And I went uh, to the competition. I did the seventh position, but I was really happy. And after that, uh, the weekend after, I did another one and I won the race. Four months after, I was fourth at the national championship. In junior, I was always on the podium, but I never won junior in junior one. But after that, I won everything in uh, my second year in junior. I won the national, the European championship and the world championship in Monsantan. And at that point, I say, OK, maybe, uh, maybe I can become professional riders if I continue like this. And I start with Scott International in Switzerland. And after that, I signed my first professional contract with Bianchi in 2001. It was really quick and I never thought about that. I think, oh, it was just fun for me. I was happy to ride, happy to go on the competition. I become professional, but like this. And it was still fun. Yes. I always had to battle against him, so I was never really kind of um, in a position where I said, hey, I'm, I'm, I can win here or something. As soon as Julian was on the start line, I knew, fuck, this gonna be, <laughs> it's going to be hard this, uh, this time. Yeah, I had so many nice battles with him, uh, some tough ones where he won, but also some of the most beautiful where I was able to beat him. Is there any special battle that you remember like, oh, that was a, that was a tough one or a race or... The harder races are when you don't win. <laughs> if you try to, to win the overall World Cup, you have to fight each race to have some points. And some days you are not in good shape. It's not there. It's not your day, but you have to push because you have to take some points. And sometimes to take some few points, it's very hard. Do you have a one very good moment that you remember from your career and one very bad one? What, do you have those extremes? Yes. For sure, the two Olympics uh, victories uh, will be there always in my memories. But also, um, the last time I won the World Championship in Norway, it was really, really nice because I won four times in a row uh, between 2004 and 2008. And after that, during nine years, I was trying. Didn't come together? No. And at the end, at 34 years old, in front of Nino Shorter, after a really nice battle, I, uh, I won uh, another time. And it was really great. And also, my two victories uh, yeah, at home uh, in La Bresse, the World, the World Cups in La Bresse, uh, it's a special moment to, when you can win in front of uh, your friend, in front uh, at home. For the bad moments, yes. you can say. At the Olympics, I won twice, and I did two times uh, that good results. In London, I had flat tires, so I didn't finish the race. It was terrible to have a technical issue during an Olympic race. And in uh, Rio in 2016, I, won, I, did, I was on the podium at all the races, and finally I did eight at the Olympics, so it was not what I was expected and I was really disappointed. But that's also that the Olympics, it's a one day race, everything can happen, the best yeah. things and the worst. His development from uh, like the races, what I did, like two and a half hour uh, cross country race, till the days right now, one and a half hour full speed, he developed in that as well. So that, that's an amazing and a change and a hard change what he did as well. You were doing long races and then he, through your career, you had to do shorter races. 
Yes. Which is the opposite, right? Usually yeah, you get older and you grow easy. longer. It was a big challenge to, to adapt my training to that because I won the um, Olympics in uh, Athens in 2 hours and 15 minutes. I won in Berlin in China in 2 hours and 2 minutes. And you also could have won in London in one and a half hours. So it's really different. Also, before the tracks were longer, with longer climb. Um, now it's really short. The climb are really short. And a little more technical now. And more technical with some uh, artificial sections. How was the feeling of that first Olympic medal when you're, okay, I'm going to race the Olympics and then you do well, you win. Were you like, okay, there's nothing else to do now? No, it was crazy because I was not a big favorite in Athens and I won. I was, I did really, it was one of my best race of my career because I was like a, like a machine this day. I have no, not a, no, no memories about the race because I was just going, just going. And after the race, it's crazy because I was not um, prepared for the after to the post race. So I mean, uh, the journalists, the TV, and okay, you don't go home because you have to go to Paris for TV. You have to go there after you go to Las Vegas for interbike. And during three weeks, you you are not, you cannot uh, plan your. You don't want your time. Yes, it's, and it was hard, big, really hard. He is just uh, the person he is, and uh, the guy that you see in the cameras is the guy uh, outside. It's uh, it's a quiet guy. He don't want to to make too much noise to to, to do the show. He he just love racing. You're you're a pretty reserved guy, right? You like being quiet at home, or have you always been like that? I never changed during my career, even with these two Olympic titles. I like to be like this. I have the same friends. I have the same way of life. For sure, it's it's open you some doors to with to uh, olympic gold medals but in the in my real life I, uh, I continue to to be the same you rode 26 then there were bar ends then there were triple chain rings then double then you know you you went through a very long list of developments right it was really interesting to to see this evolution, this evolution, because yes, I start with 26 inch wheels, uh, hard tail, uh, double chain wheel. I never rode the uh, third, but uh, and now I have a 29 inch wheel, uh, full suspension, uh, drop a seat post. You, you're telling me the car about the suspension. You used to ride a hard tail, and then it came a point you're like, okay, I gotta, I have to use suspension, full suspension. Huh? Yes, I was one of the last to use the hard tail, but uh, I'm really proud to be maybe one of the first one to use single chain wing because I won in Berlin uh, with a single. Uh, well, well, I was one of the first one. And after that, uh, I was also one of the first to you to ride an uh, electronic uh, drive train. Mm -hmm. I was riding prototype uh, for Shimano XTRDI2. And also one of the first to use a drop a seat post. It's really interesting also because it's an uh, endurance sport, but also mechanical sports. And it's really, the, make, the material is really important. You need to, to do the good choice. Um, you need to choose your bike, uh, your wheels, but, also, but the tires, the pressure of the tires, the setting of the suspensions, um, and all of that can can do a really big difference uh, on the race. At some point, you start working with a specialist, a suspension specialist. Do you see a time in mountain biking where you're going to have, like in motorsports, an engineer for your bike, where you tell yes, everything what's happening? It can, it can happen. Yes, uh, I start now till uh, 2004 with a. Uh, a suspension specialist. Uh, on each track we have different settings. We do a telemetry uh, like in um, motorsports and after that we analyze on the computer uh, what we need and after we adjust the suspension. Uh, Set it up exactly yes, for the course. exactly the good setup. I won the my last world, world title in Norway in 2004 like this. He did a really great job on the bike. He was um, working for the National Federation and after that I asked him, okay, can we work together 
for the for the future, uh, and he is now the mechanic of the Absolute Epsilon team. Nice. How important it was for you, and now you're passing to Nalo and your your new riders when they come, diet and rest and and other things in your training. Do you eat everything, meats? Yes, I eat everything, but I really like um, to know how, to, how the body works, and especially with the diet. The fuel of the engine, and when you choose the good fuel, it's, it works better. But you can eat everything, it depends on the, the quantity and, uh, and the quality, all, right? Yeah, no quality. And in terms of supplements and that kind of stuff, you probably saw a very big evolution through your career as well. Yes, but it's always better to find the vitamins and everything in the food. Uh, it's important sometimes to do some uh, blood testing to, to see what if you have some problem, if you miss something. But uh, it's always better to, to try to have everything with the food. And if something is wrong yeah. at this moment, you can fix it. You need to use yeah. some uh, supplements. We, we talk about the diet, but the other point is also the mind. Uh, I think at the really high level, all the athletes are more or less at the same level. But with the head, you can do the difference. And that's really important. And it's really difficult to know how it works. Um, and there is not only one strategy. There is one strategy for each one. So you need to, to speak to the athlete and to understand how it works. And it's not, it's not easy. You understand his buttons, right? Yes. <laughs> People always think like being a team manager, it's all easy because, you know, they just jump on their bike and then they race. But um, it's not like this. And especially when you were an athlete, as I was before, and then you transition into, into that role of being a team manager, you all of a sudden figure out how much work all those people, and it's not just the manager, it's everybody behind the team, how much work they put in, how much effort is it, it is to put everything in place, how much effort it is to, to create a team that works together and stands for one goal. It's, it's not that easy. It seems easy when you're a rider, but it's not easy at all when you actually have to do it. Because you need to be creative, you need to push things through, you need to be the nice guy, you need to be the bad guy, all in one person. Well, my advice is uh, one door closes, another one opens up. Uh, I'm sure uh, he will find himself uh, in a good position still being with the sport as a team manager and he's still going to be a very important person uh, to, to give uh, a lot to the sport of mountain biking. What do you think is going to be your, your team manager's philosophy? My team manager philosophy will be to, to understand the, the, the athletes um, and to um, propose them the best solution for them. I, I want to share my experience but I don't want to say to them, okay, I, I did like this, so you need to do like this because maybe it's not it's not the same. Yeah, no, I have experience, but I don't want to impose. impose some, so I will try to understand the, the riders. How do you see yourself in ten years, man? I hope to be still still in the mountain bike world, and maybe with a really big team. <laughs> it's a lot of Olympic medals. And... Yes. Do you see the team growing, going to I like hope. four or five, you know, riders? Yes, I hope. Before him, uh, you know, it was a different generation, I think. And I think Nino's taken over from Julian in the last sort of two or three years. But the battles that those two had when they were both trying to, Julian was kind of coming to the close of his big term and, and Nino was kind of trying to establish himself. That, that created some really cool racing. Now that you're not on the start line anymore, you probably can talk more freely about your, your competitors. Who do you think are the really strong guys there? This yeah, for sure, the boss of now, and the boss is Nino, uh, Nino Schotter. Uh, he is the favorite. Mathieu van der Poel is a really big talent. He is able to win on the road, in cyclocross and also on mountain bike. And he is now focused on the Olympics. So we do, he will do more mountain bike races because he wants to prepare the Olympics. So it will be also a, a favorite for the, for the Olympics and for the next races because he will ride the all World Cup. Yeah, I think he is in a happy place. Like uh, the decision, I think it took a lot of courage as well to to really make this decision. But I think he is happy with what he does now. He has a lot of new projects. If you weren't a bike rider, what would you you think you would be? I was fan of uh, rally cars when I was young, so... Uh, really? Yes, I love that. I love the, all the motorsports. Uh, I, I did one rally uh, last winter. Oh yeah? In yes. France? How did you do? 
Good. Uh, we were in in my category. It was um, 15 Opel Adams, mm. and I did fourth. Nice. I grew up idolising the guy, you know, I was in Rotorua, New Zealand when he won his world title there as a kid with bare feet running around like a madman. Um, and so I've grown up with him in the sport and it's a shame to see someone who's so iconic and such a, you know, uh, ambassador for our, for our sport uh, retire. But uh, at the same time, I uh, really look forward to his uh, future plans in the sport. Do you feel successful? Yeah, I'm satisfied. That's also why I stopped uh, now, because I don't want to start a race if I'm not able to fight for the victory. I will do some of the races for sure, but I'm in the Olympic formats, if I race, I want to be in front or to fight in front, because uh, I have a competitor mind. So that's why, OK, I think I did a lot and now, now maybe I can... Yeah, maybe it's a good time, but I always want to train because I, I love to train, I love to drive my bike. So um, I did maybe more, more training, a little bit less intensity, for sure less intensity, but uh, I, train, I train a lot still. Any places you like to visit? You travel a lot already. Yeah, maybe I will have more time to visit because sometimes, you know, you go to a country, you see the airport, the venue of the race, and that's it. And I, I really like traveling and discover the world the culture, different foods. Uh, maybe to visit a little bit, more, little bit more South Africa, Australia. Brazil? Brazil, yes. Brazilians are really fan of mountain bike. Uh, I saw the statistic on my social media. I have, I have a lot of Brazilian uh, followers. So I'm happy that, uh, about that. Maybe I, I will interact more interact with, more with uh, these, uh, these fans and also I can come to Brazil.